Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video we're going to continue off from where we left off, last time adding scores and kills and deaths tracking with a scoreboard and synchronizing it. This time around we're going to be working a bit more on the guns. Now last time when I ended off I said that we'd be working on the weapon switching. I actually first, before we do that, want to have a video where we go into making the gun in general just a little bit nicer, a little bit more expanded, so that way when we do add more guns we already have that functionality set up. So one of the things that I want to do is add some fire rate, so we can control how, fa how fast can you shoot. Um, so let's do that, private, float, and this will be our fire rate. I guess the computer was listening. I'll just set that to half a second for now. And the way that I want to be tracking that is I want to be tracking essentially when is the last time that we shot. Last fire time, like this. And so essentially, um, every time that you try and press the mouse button, it should also check if you try to fire. So let's do if last fire time plus the fire rate is greater than time dot time we return. Otherwise, we'll set the last fire time to time dot time. And it's probably a good idea to set it to time dot unscaled time. If you have a newer version of Unity, you should be able to do this. Unscaled time essentially just means if your computer lags, it doesn't matter. Um, so let's also use that up here just to keep it. It's very important you keep it consistent. You can't be mixing the different types of time. Um, but for these kind of things, obviously, if your computer lag, you shouldn't be able to shoot faster or slower than anyone else. You should be able to shoot at the same rate, which is what unscaled time can help you do. All right, great. So essentially now we should be able to just do this and we can also just do get key. So this way, um, or actually we can do both get key and get key down. So we can just make a bool, serialized field, private bool. Uh, let's just see, say automatic. And so essentially we do, if it is, if it is not automatic, Wait, hold on. Um, let's essentially do, let's just simplify the logic here. So if it is automatic um, and we're not holding the button down, input dot get key. So that's the normal get key, key code dot mouse zero. Um, or it is not automatic and we haven't pressed the button, then we return. Essentially like this, I think should make sense. So, you know, if it's not automatic, we're gonna have to click. If it is automatic, we just have to hold or click. Both will work here. Okay, awesome. Let's also add a bit of a fire effect. So I like the idea of just having a little particle effect. So let's do a private particle system, which will just do uh, be a little muscle flash. And this will essentially fire and tell everybody. Now, since we're on the uh, unsafe rules, players can directly call up service RPCs. So I'll do private void, play muscle flash, like so. And we can set this to also run locally to true. So this way it'll run immediately if you're the local player who's the one calling it. So let me just put that in here as well. So we play the muscle flash and let's also just for good measure, I always like doing this, is just checking that the muscle flash actually exists. Um, and actually let's just instead of doing this, let's call this just uh, play shot effect because we might want to use this a little more generically in the future. So if there is a muscle flash, we play the muscle flash. And this is also where you know we can implement sound or maybe recall if we want that to only be visual or whatever we want to do, we can handle that in here. All right, now let's go and put the little muscle flash on the weapon. So I'm just gonna make a little effect, which is gonna be a particle system. This is gonna be our muscle flash. I'm just gonna try and make this rather quickly. I am fairly familiar with Unity's system here, um, but not sort of super familiar. Um, but let's make, give it a lifetime of 0.2, for example, 0.3 maybe to make it really quick. We'll put it at the very tip of the gun. Like so, I think that works. The radius gotta be even smaller. All right, great. Let's make it so they are way, way, way smaller. So let's do start size between two constants which would be 0 0.1 and 0 0.1 for now, 0 0.2 maybe. I will make it so that it bursts instead. So it does it in a burst. It's one second, there it goes. Now it'll burst like this, which I think kind of works. Uh, might be a little too quick. Let's try and do it a little slower. Maybe three speed. We can randomize the speed actually a bit, so it can be between two and four perhaps, maybe one and four. And then over lifetime, we can do size over lifetime. There we go, size over lifetime, I want it scaling down. And I think it needs to be even quicker. So let's do lifetime 0.15. There we go, I think that's a good flash. And now we can change the colors as well uh, to make it maybe like a yellow orangey and a reddish color. Maybe more of a yellow color. These particles are very dark. Let me go to the render and just change the material. I like often just using the default line render. I know this makes these big cubes, but bear with me. 
Um, so let's also just quickly randomize the rotation. So start rotation, random between two constants, zero to 360. I guess 90 in this case is fine. Size can be even smaller. So like this, this will burst a bunch of them. Let's only burst maybe 15, maybe 10. Yeah, I think this already looks pretty good. Let's make this a more harsh orangey color now. There we go. Okay, awesome. I think we have a good little looking muscle flash here. And let's just save that as prefab as well, so we can always change it in the future. And let's also make sure to have it not play on awake. And also if it has a stop action, set it to none, just for good measure. Now it doesn't play on awake either. Great. And we can drag and drop that in here. Awesome. So now if I go and I hit play, see here, so whenever we shoot, you can see now this little muscle flash happens. Great. And essentially if I go into my play, oh, it's set to repeat, of course, it's set to loop. We cannot have that. Let's take the muscle flash, remove the looping. Great. All right. So now that should work. That's awesome. Now we have a little muscle flash. And let's also just go and check on for the clients that it actually plays. So I'm going to have my client run up here and see that we can see the muscle flash. There you go. Great. Now we have a little muscle flash happening when you shoot. I think this looks pretty good. Very cute. Um, awesome. Now we have them both be able to be full auto. We have a little muscle flash. We could add some sound and stuff like that if we want as well. But I think this is fine for now. Another thing that I want to try and add is maybe a little bit of weapon recoil to have the weapon actually move every time that you shoot so that it does sort of a little uh, kind of bounce effect. Um, and let's have a look at how we best do this. So obviously there's the uh, water pistol object here. And what we would essentially want that to do is to maybe go a bit backwards and go a bit up, maybe a little bit back as well. We can try and figure that out how we want to do it. All right, let's make some headers for this as well. Uh, I like essentially just trying to keep things clean. So let's do, oh, sorry, let's do a header. Let's call it stats. And I want to move pretty much these four up here. And I want to have a header that I just call references here. This is essentially just sort of the base setup that we want to have. And this is all the things more unique to the gun's actual stats. And then I think we can also now make a header for the recall. Okay, awesome. Let's serialize a field. And let's maybe have a private float for the recall strength. Let's just default that to one for now. And let's also make some animation curves. So let's do private serialize field. Oh yeah, recall duration is a great idea as well. Let me do 0 0.2, something like that. And yeah, let's do the animation curve. So private animation curve, which will be the recoil curve. And let's maybe also have a rotation amount and a rotation curve. So let's do a serialized field, private float, rotation amount will be equals to how many degrees we wanted to rotate. Let's try and have a look actually, we can try and test this. So let me go here and let's say we wanted to rotate this much. That's about 27 degrees. Of course, we can always set it in editor later, um, but let me just set it to, yeah, let's try 25 for example. And then let's do a serialized field, private animation curve for the rotation curve. Okay, awesome. Now we need to implement these. And so these should essentially happen when we play the shot effect. However, since we have a network transform on the object, we actually only want this to be played likely for the local client and it should just mimic. Now it might be a little fast to mimic, but let's give it a shot. So let's do a play recoil method. And let's add that down here. Private void play recoil. Um, and maybe we should actually make this either an I enumerator or we have to play it differently in update. I think for now, let's make it an I enumerator just to keep it separate. Make a system I enumerator like that. And let's also start it as a coroutine up here like so. The reason why I'm making the I enumerator now is so we can play things over time uh, instead of only in a single frame. Because obviously we don't do recoil in a single frame. Okay, so first things first, let's start by storing all our original uh, stuff. So let's do a private vector three, which will be our uh, original position. We'll do a private quaternion, which will be our original rotation. And also let's keep track of the actual coroutine. So let's do a private coroutine, which will be the underscore recall coroutine. All right, awesome. So in our start method, we can do it in multiple places, but let's do it in start where we just track all of these. So the original position, will be equals to the uh, transform dot local position. And the original rotation will be the transforms local rotation. All right, awesome. Whenever that we start the coroutine, let's also just set the recall coroutine equals to our recall coroutine here that we start. And then we can also say that if the recall coroutine is not null, then we want to run a stop coroutine on the coroutine first to make sure that of course we don't layer them. All right, great. So 
Now down here where we actually have to make the logic. First things first is we want to keep track of how much time has gone. Uh, let's just call this elapsed, for example. This is essentially how much time has passed uh, while doing this because we got to be doing it in a while loop. And so we'll be doing while the elapsed time is less than the recall duration, which means this is essentially how long we'll be running for. And then the very first thing that we want to do is let's just store, um, let's just add the delta to the elapsed time. So let's do elapsed plus equals to time dot delta time like so. And then essentially we also want to keep track of the curve time. So let's do a curve time equals to, uh, and this will essentially be our elapsed time divided by our recoil duration, like so. So now this is essentially how far along the curve are we. If, we're not, if you're not familiar with animations curves, uh, let me just quickly do a yield return null here at the bottom. We will want that regardless anyway, just so it doesn't have an error. I just wanted to show you guys the animation curve if you're not familiar with them, because they are very, very useful. Essentially, they allow you to draw out with different curves and shapes how you want things to work out. Since this is a you know recall curve, I think what we should be doing is likely some kind of burst fairly early on, and then you know it'll end down at the bottom. You can always edit the key to value zero at time one, like that, and it'll likely end something like this. We can also add a dot up here, move it to earlier, and something like this I think is a pretty normal sort of recall curve. Um, I could be entirely wrong, but let me try and just make something just to show you. So, you know, it'll do like a, a fast early jitter animation when we do shoot. And then, you know, it'll, the animation will kind of fade back to its original position. So this is essentially the time that you've got to think of. And this is the curve time that we have here. So this time will move from zero to one on this animation curve. So it'll essentially over the recall time, which in this case is 0 0.2, it'll essentially move through this in 0 0.2 seconds, which means we might want to make this actually a little bit longer, I realize, because, you know, it's going to, go pretty quick in the beginning. And you can of course add as many points as you want in case you wanna have some more freedom. I don't really need that point, but you get the idea. And of course, again, uh, we can always, you can copy paste them as well, which is very useful. And we can always edit these as we sort of try it out. So I'm definitely not gonna hit this perfect on the first try. I think it was just very valid to show you guys so you understand a little bit more of the logic that we're making here. Now, the first thing that I wanna do is I wanna handle the positional recoil. Um, so I just add the node here so you know what is what. So let's first of all, just calculate a recall value, which is essentially where on the curve that we are. And yeah, you can see it got it correct here. So it took the recall curve, it doesn't evaluate, which is essentially where it figures out how far along on the recall curve are we and what is the value. So you can see the x-axis down here at the bottom is time. So when we are, for example, 20% of the way there, it'll check what is the value up here and then it'll bring that value back. So in this case, if we're on 0 0.2, it should bring back, what is it, 0 0.93, something like that. Uh, and that's essentially what we'll get here then as our recall value. And this is now how much we can, now we can then calculate what our offset should be. So I'll calculate a recall offset, which will be equals to essentially what we want the recoil to be. Now, the hard part for me is, is the recoil just backwards or is it upwards? What is the recoil? Let's start by trying to just make it backwards and see how that looks. So I'm going to do a transform dot, uh, forward and then we're going to do a negative transform dot forward and we will then times that with uh, in parentheses our recall value times the recall strength great now we have the recall offset and now we essentially just apply that to the transform dot local position equals to original position plus the recall offset this is now how you know you can see how strongly that the offset will be added because of the recall value from the curve so essentially you know in the beginning the recall will be very heavy will be very far away and then it'll fade back to its original position which zero essentially is now let's just apply that same logic to the rotational recoil let's do rotation recoil we'll do float we'll do the rotation value equals to rotation curve dot evaluate and that'll be the curve time and then we'll do vector three to the rotation offset it's a new rotation with the rotation amount. Uh, I think this should be fine because we only probably want to ro rotate on the x-axis. You can see that when we rotate here, you can see this only happens on the x-axis. And then let's do a transform dot local rotation equals to original rotation times quaternion dot Euler to the rotational offset that we now got. All right, great. And then in the end, when it's all said and done, it might be a good idea to just sort of force them back to their actual positions in case something could happen, you know, for example, when we stop the, the coroutine or whatnot, it can also be a good idea to just sort of force them back if you want to. All right, great. Let's try and go and have a look at how this looks now. Okay, that looks absolutely horrifying. Let's try and get a better look from the outside. Whoops, that was not what I was trying to do. Let's try and get a better look from the outside here to see what is actually happening. 
So let me go out of 2D. Let me find our player over here so we can see what's happening with the gun. And then let me try and shoot. It looks like it is going... What is it doing? Very interesting. Okay. Let's try and have a think to see what we've done. So first of all, I actually want to go to the pistol itself and just make sure if I go to the uh, local rotation. Yeah, so that is forward. So why is it jumping sideways? What did I do? Oh, of course, uh, transform.forward is the wrong thing to use. Let's instead use vector3.back. I think this should maybe work a little better for us. Let's have a look, see how this does. And also actually just for easier testing, let me go to the state machine, wait for players and say only wait for one player. That way it'll start with just us. Okay, so I think it does go backwards now. That's a good start. I'll just try and modify exactly how much it goes backwards by. Um, so right now, recall strength is 0 0.1. Let's, oh, sorry, 1. Let's try and set up 0 0.1. Okay, there you go. You can all see the recalls going down. This is likely because we need this to be a negative value to rotate upwards. And there you go. Now you can see we have a little recoil. It moves back and it kind of recalls up. I think this actually looks surprisingly good <laughs> uh, for the first values used. Okay, let's just remember these values. Negative 25 and 0 0.1. So let's go into the player, add this 0 0.1 and negative 25. There we go. And now we should have good looking recall. Now let's try and see how it looks for other players as well. So let's go back, set the waiting for players to two. And let's try and start it up again. So now the other player is going to come along. Let's try and see how his recall looks. Yeah, okay. So his, so his gun doesn't really recoil for us. Oh, of course, that's because we're not actually transforming this. Okay, well, that's actually fine then because then we can just apply it locally. So we can have the play recoil just happen from within the um, the play shot effect. Yeah. So this should be fine. Now they all just should do it locally whenever the shot effect is shot. And that should be, yeah, that should be good. So let's have a look. Okay, so he's gonna come along, he shoots, and there you go. Now you can see he also fires the recoil. And yeah, I actually think this looks really nice. Awesome. All right, so now you actually feel shooting a little bit more and you can actually see when you shoot. Awesome. Well, I'm very happy with how this came along so far. Let's, uh, in the next video, look a bit more into weapon switching and how we handle that as well. I hope you liked the video. Please do leave a like, comment and subscribe. It truly does help the channel a lot. And other than that, I just hope that you have a wonderful day.